So at 4.30, we're going to go ahead and start the policy committee. Um, let's see. Where were we? So we were on... Oh, I've got the I feel like we made it like, like to the prohibited animals. Did we get through the dissection part? Yeah, because we talked about dissection and experiments. So oh, I yeah. wonder if we're on to them. Okay. All right. So we're on prohibited. Yes. 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 Thank you. I'm glad somebody's thinking for me because I can't. Oh, did we? Okay, so she's still working on this. Okay, perfect. All right, so we'll go ahead and pop up the draft we're working on. purpose the following live animals are prohibited in any school facility for any time or purpose. Inherently dangerous animals. Okay. Any venomous or toxin producing animals. Aggressive or unpredictable animals. Stray animals are animals with no health or vaccine, vaccination history. Mammals at high risk for having or transmitting rabies. And any animals on the Idaho invasive species list for which proper state permitting and documentation of ownership has not been obtained prior to classroom housing. Snappy turtles, red-eared sliders, rat re red-eared fish. Is it's probably red-eared. Okay. That person, do you know? <laughs> Should we Google it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. Seems like it should be red. I, I would think so. Red eared slider. Okay, yeah. so take the A out. The turtle. Mini blind snake. Monk parakeet. And new tree. Okay. Um, does anyone think there's any problem with any of the way they're... I would say that, like, as far as inherently dangerous, is there, like, do we, is there no oh, consider... I apologize, we didn't introduce ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Maria, board clerk. Michelle Thompson. I'm Jacqueline, mom of three in the district. I'm Lacey. I have three kiddos in the district, and I work at Twin Lakes. Yes. Shannon, writer, I work at Timberley, and have two kids in the district. Colleen Adder, I have two kids in the district. Mary Conrath, um, on staff, and also had two kids go through Lakeland. Okay. And a former graduate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So as you were saying. No, but, um, so as far as inherently dangerous, I don't know what we would consider inherently dangerous. Correct. And then aggressive and unpredictable, I would say that animals are inherently unpredictable. I mean, I, that, like, I think you just have to, like, it's an right. animal. So yeah. the language, I guess, kind of is vague in, in that sense. Okay. So what shall we do about the language? Because I that was when I was reading this, I'm like, it's so subjective and yeah. you're not specifically yeah. telling people what they can't bring. What about any animal with a history of history aggression? History of or known, known okay. aggression. or documented behavioral problems? Mm hmm Does that, okay. But then what kind of documented? I would say okay. behavioral. Yeah. With a history of documented aggression. Or bit. Uh, yeah. Or history or of aggression and un or, un or and uh, unpredictable behavior. I don't know that I would want to specify documented only from the from the aspect of like if this person like all the neighbors knew this dog was a biter yeah but there was no like documentation right. I think right. like right. if you can make a case yeah. that it was known that would mm -hmm. be 
Yeah, maybe just unknown history. Okay. So any animal with a known history of aggression or behavioral problems. Um, it's inherently dangerous. I, it's Does that cover it though, that we can scrap yeah. A? Mm -hmm. I, would, I would say yes. But the, the A is addressing, you know, uh, large animals. Um, Could we put some? Yes. Or, I, I, or, no, or, because to me, rats are dangerous yeah, animals because yeah. they bite <laughs> yeah. and they right. scare me. So <laughs> they're dangerous. <laughs> Maybe not be dangerous to mm -hmm. other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, like a wolf. Or, you know, okay. which right. we did at Twin when I was there have a feeling that would freeze. <laughs> I just remember I in my classroom and they were so tall. I could yeah, they're huge. Oh, they're yeah, they're huge. I was like, what is that? No kids were there, but. <laughs> and to me, that would be a dangerous animal. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's a wolf. Right. But, but you know, they would not necessarily say, oh, these are, they're not aggressive. Right. They're, they, we've never had a problem mm -hmm. with them, but. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. Is there a way to, like. A bear cub. <laughs> well, those would be cute those and cuddly. They're well, really you know, but they're also yeah. the mama bear is the dangerous yeah. one. Um, so, would you list like? Do we then kind of get in the weeds on trying to list what we would consider inherently dangerous? Could, on that note, could we do something about domesticated versus undomesticated? I mean, a rat can be domesticated. True. There are un. Domesticated yeah. rats. Rats. Mm -hmm. yeah. A dog can be domesticated, and right? It can also be mm -hmm. feral. So mm -hmm. true. I don't know if that maybe kind of that. So that no, that but there's no be... domesticated bears. Right. So crocodiles. But, yeah, un so undomest crocodiles. Undomesticated. <laughs> yeah. Animals. So and that would be that would leave out the, the yeah. wolf breeds and. The, and then that could also be the, subjective mm -hmm. to. Well, it's a dog. Well, no, it's a feral dog, or it's a. Mm -hmm. And you can't pick up your mouse you found on the way to school and bring it in for show and tell that if you have a pet mouse. Mm -hmm. The animal that is not is that 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 statements about the animal's temperament based on what you see in the clinic. I mean, they relate, but they're going to yeah. be differently there. Yeah, for sure. I'm a vet, just for <laughs> full disclosure. Um, yeah, I mean, vets definitely will put in the record, like, here's what I witnessed, you know, things like that, or histories that were given to them if someone comes in and says the dog bit me or whatever. Um, the things that do get tricky, though, is, like, there's a lot of vets who wouldn't necessarily, like, I'm going to write up a letter about how aggressive this dog is for you because then they worry they're going to get sued by whoever mm -hmm. owns the dog or whatever, you know. So, yes, in the chart, there would be no... So if but then, just... as... Oh, sorry. No, I just want to, like, if, when we were talking about, like, later on when we were talking about having, like, an animal exam or something, would, if, if, I wonder if we could get out of trying to um, list all of these things if in our requirements later regarding vaccines or whatever, if we mention, like, and, um, you know, something about the vet, you know, noting, you know, temperament that would be yeah. suitable for a classroom or something, is that something that would... Yes, although the only tricky part would be like, what did we change that to? Um, Michelle, can you go back to where we were? Sorry, oh, sure, sure, sure. The known history and the non domesticated, if somebody, I'm just going to throw a scenario out, might bring an animal in that appears to be domesticated, and you know, I would say, yep, this guy looks good, and really there's, they're not telling me something or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I was. I still personally would keep in these bullet points okay. and then just also have the vet say, yeah, this kind of covers all the bases. Okay, I would cool. Think. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, so there's re changing any inherently dangerous animal to any non domesticated animal. Does that seem. To cover what I, we're trying I mean, that's really what we're trying to say is that we're not bringing in yeah. domestic non. So correct me if I'm wrong, but then I'm wondering about how the example we used last week was like the birds of prey that yeah. will come in sometimes. Right. That's right. not to I mean, right. right. That's right. right. Oh, no, that's right. Yeah, but the birds of prey would be inherently dangerous. I know. I mean, because they're. Ooh. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so we can make exceptions for those, yeah. Or mm -hmm. like if someone's bringing in a you know, the reptile guy or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So but maybe cross out for any time or purpose and then just include except with written permission from the principal. Yeah. Or handled by a professional. Yeah, yeah by, there you go. By professionals. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that's... Yeah. Because, well, because this in that case... It's hard to put in here anyway because... Um, you know, regardless of the desired educational purpose and the, like for any time or purpose, because with a service animal, we are, our tie, hands are really tied about questions we can ask. We can't know if they're, you know, I mean, a kid could walk in with a pit bull and say, this is my service animal, and we're not allowed to ask any questions. And so this, that would be violating it. Seriously? Mm -hmm. Then... <laughs> Why haven't you the rules? Shannon, I wasn't listening uh, that's to what you just said. Seems I was like, thinking, which is, you know, if, if multitasking we, is becoming yeah. less and less. <laughs> you do. What did you just say that you're not Just allowed? about service animals and how we're not allowed to ask questions about right. vaccinations or, you know, just the, legis the right, right, right. red tape that surrounds right. that. That wouldn't go along with that statement. So if we were to rephrase that Actually, statement. though, on service animals, we are allowed as, to ask as for as proof of vaccination. Oh, okay. As a school, that, as yeah. a district, because we should be able to. I mean, you yeah. are putting a, we, an animal yeah. in we are with allowed hundreds to ask of other students. Uh -huh. um, you can't ask, yeah, you can't ask why they have the service animal, right. but you can ask them to provide documentation for the service animal. I, no, you cannot. I'll pull it up. Yeah, no, you I know we can't ask for that. Documentation for it? Mm -hmm. Correct. We can yeah. ask if we the just animal is... We just happened at the We've end. been... So, yeah. <laughs> like, just, we right. can ask if the animal is vaccinated and we can ask for proof of vaccination, I believe. But we can't ask, you know, so proof yeah, of... Legally. No, uh, that, that is, legally, yeah. that's why we cannot. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because our policy mirrors the laws about it. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. But yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so. I believe it's interesting. Okay, so if we change the sentence to state, to begin with, the following live animals are prohibited in any school facility without a proper handler and approval from the building principal, then we're kind of opening the door to say these little guys are definitely allowed on campus. Which little guys? Well, non-domesticated animals, venomous and toxin-producing animals. We're saying well, these can come if they've got the handler and if the building principal said well, yeah. Was that actually what you were talking about? Like the well, I wouldn't say proper handler. I would say professional. Without okay. a professional handler. Not necessarily proper. Whose definition no, is fine, proper? Yeah. Professional, which in the case of um, the birds of prey. Do they have um, some type of like certification, the birds of prey I, people? I, they have to have some kind of certification and licensure to have mm -hmm. those animals. Okay. All I care about in is their ability. possession. Yeah, yeah. no, for sure. That's why I want to make sure. Sure. Yeah. 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 Well, and we could do keep the changes you made there on number one and then have a number two that says, you know, back to what it said, that these ones are not, not allowed at all and then keep with the no stray animals or with no known history and the whole invasive species thing because those probably, even with handlers, we wouldn't. I mean, handlers but wouldn't venomous and toxin, if the reptile guy comes in, Right, and that's yeah. what I'm saying. So, like, leave A, B, and he B, and C under one, and then have another one that says, like, these ones for not sure aren't allowed. I kind of thought the point of the, the phrase without a professional handler approval was so, like, without that, you can't bring these. With that, you could possibly bring these. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, you but I think what I do, but I think what Jacqueline is saying is that these are the only two items that may, that would merit a professional handler. Whereas an animal with a known history of aggression or behavioral problems, that could be, you know, somebody's pet dog. Right. And that we would, there would just be no, I mean, there wouldn't be a professional handler. There wouldn't be a professional handler because right. the dogs are not on it. 
Yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. I mean, it, yeah, right, and stray animals. Same with stray um, animals or invasive right. species. But honestly, I mean, to just play devil's advocate with invasive species, if there was Please. some sort of forestry class, I took lots of those in high school, right. they could bring in samples of something. It may not be necessarily alive, but it would be a professional forester right. showing you a red ear. And I don't Sorry. know if our FFA program does go into that type and of they, depth. Yeah, I wish they might. FFA, I don't know. But on forestry, the Idaho makes, I mean, we would have foresters come in and show us things. Pine like, beetles. I mean, yeah, yeah pine beetles are the, again, not necessarily alive, and they're obviously not going to just like, let them go. But Well, but they would be allowed to come in, though, because they're they be professional and right, trained. Right. With right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess what I hear you saying is that we shouldn't. We don't need to segregate like these particular ones no. out. No, I was thinking, yeah, that that little phrase would kind of cover it all. Cover it all, and then obviously the vice prince or the principal isn't going to let someone with their stray dog come in. They're 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 not a professional. Right, right. So there's no need to separate them because you know what? Could really define it and say a licensed professional handbook. But, some but, of them I, don't, but I don't know that they necessarily. Yeah, like a yeah. forester is not going to be licensed. Not licensed necessarily, they but they would proper have. proper permits, but they're mm. not going to be licensed. But okay, no stray animal has a professional handler, so it's, yeah. it's a non-issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so those little kiddos. Uh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Seem to think. Guys. That is very true. <laughs> um, so, okay. So what do you think, Jacqueline? Just yeah. leaving these things. Okay. okay. Um, any other comments with any of the other language? Mammals at high risk for having or transmitting? Shouldn't that just be animals? I mean, I say mammals. Well, it's mammals. Like mammals, and I think bats would be what you're yeah. referring to as the primary bats and raccoons, which. We might be able to skip that one because later we're going to require that these animals have rabies, rabies vaccinations and. if the vet deems it appropriate. So any animal that it has a high risk for having rabies, that's going to be covered in that health and vaccination requirements. Well, right. except that even with its, uh, I mean, you wouldn't even want, why would you bring up an animal that's at high risk, even if it's, I, I don't know that they can vaccinate a bat. For yeah, instance, I mean, but like, maybe well, actually in, in North Idaho, I don't know if any animals are at high risk of rabies. There's no, it's not really, <laughs> not really high risk here. Animals only, but only mammals can get rabies, mm -hmm. so yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say animals, because... Well, it's it's being specific, because so you, won't I mean, you wouldn't say fish. I would say, I would keep it as mammals, because mammals are the ones who transmit. Get... It's not fish, know, it's not it, birds. All we're talking about There's other <laughs> animals concerns for birds. throwing in mammals. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay. Just don't bring in rabies. I'm just, I think that that is actually going to be like addressed when we get into the health and vaccination requirements so that, that no animal that would have a risk for carrying rabies is going to be allowed in the school without having a rabies vaccination anyway. Well, so, I don't what, know if the redundancy is. I think it's sort of maybe what they were saying, like, Bats and raccoons, like if there were a Outs. wildlife person coming in, oh, okay. outside, outside of cats and dogs. Oh, I mean, right, it's only right. cats and dogs and ferrets that are listed here mm -hmm. under the health requirements and vaccination requirements. Yeah, that's right. Not. Yes. Yes. Well, let's skip down here and see what this says, and maybe it'll go up and help us <coughs> revise what we've got going on up here. Just the building principal may prohibit any animal from being present upon the school's property on a case-by-case -case basis. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you remember if I crossed out building and just made it principal, or did I stick with the building? Yep, yeah, it's building. And then okay. in the beginning, but then it yeah, happened it so much, yeah. I think it was just... Okay. Building principal is appropriate. I got stuck on words last week, so we're good. <laughs> Prior to bringing... Okay certain animals into school buildings, current health records, and or proof of current vaccination um, is required. I think that should just be the end. And Michelle, we were talking before we started here that, because I think we did the therapy we dogs did. last year, and mm -hmm. I think we put, like, we... This is, was from, Is yes. that from that? Well, because when we did that, that's where, because 
Nate was here last week and he's like, didn't we already do this? And I'm like, no. What mm -hmm. happened was we did the therapy one and discovered we didn't have one um. for animals in the school grounds. So, but we never got back to it because of everything else that is, you know, everything has to be done. So, uh -huh. but we did copy and paste because we were kind of looking at them to see. So that came from this the therapy from dog. Because I yeah. thought we took out like parainfluenza, maybe lepto and all, like, I thought we pared the vaccines down. I could be wrong. That was a long time ago. I just found the policy. I was just searching for it because I wanted to. The therapy dog policy? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Yeah. So what's what, its number? Is um, this it? It's 2585. 2375. 2375? Yeah. Well, I think it says community relations and the service animals in school. Oh, that's service animals. Okay. Oh, is that not what we're talking about? I, I was looking at therapy, but what does the th okay. service say? Um, it said, do you want me to read the whole thing? Sure. Okay. The Board of Trustees acknowledge its responsibility to permit school students and or adults with disabilities as required by the ADA um, to be accompanied by a service animal on district premises or at any district sponsored activity. Any use of a service animal shall be subject to the following. One, when it is not readily apparent what service the animal provides, the principal or designee may inquire. I wonder if this is old. It is old. Okay. Yeah, this because doesn't it seem doesn't. Right. No, yeah, it's, this one. Yeah, that's wrong. This one was revised in 2021, so this isn't the one from last year. But I can't. Um, you said it's 23 what? Seven five. But that's still up on our district website of mm -hmm. that being the current policy. Unless there's another one somewhere. Oh, okay. Two five eight five is use of therapy dogs in district. School therapy dog package form, therapy dog plan. the animal is going to do yeah. and nudging is qualifies so um, I'm just wondering what Ryan was reading to me <laughs> in his office when we had our situation because I mean it was like you couldn't act about it you couldn't look at it you couldn't was it the law? You can't look at it. <laughs> you're not supposed to. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, you're, you're supposed to just acknowledge that you are not, not this. And really don't be really not acknowledged at all. So he's like, all the staff, we have to stand out in school. Don't look at the dog. 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 Right. Yeah. Well, I do know we need to revise this one. Truly trained animal. Yeah. You're not supposed to engage just simply because it's there for that person. but. Um, on so many situations, that's mm -hmm. the case. Mm -hmm. They're not trained. Yeah, and they're just and there. Whatever Ryan was reading to me it was like we couldn't ask if they were licensed. Like if, if mm -hmm. this dog had gone through any type of training, like no, no question. That's correct. I mean, it okay. does Is that say. Here? Well, that's just it. That that we can't ask for them to demonstrate their ability to perform the task. And we cannot require, well, it says may not, which means subjective, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. shall not, mm -hmm. require certification, training, license, or, but we can ask for vaccination of the service animal. Well, we can ask if the animal's been vaccinated. Because okay. that needs to have occurred. I know. Mm -hmm. and yeah, so you we, can't just, you know, just but yeah, yeah this policy okay. needs to be revised. Um, but I do know that we cannot ask for proof that that, the service animal has actually been yeah. trained because service animals go through a rigor yeah. and it's not a quick process. Yeah. True service animals. Yeah. True service animals, correct. Yeah. Um, but uh, 
when you, with the hands being tied that you can't ask for proof, you're subject to people claiming their animals are service animals. I know. Because so. I had like, oh, okay. And, and yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, right. Yeah. Well, and, and there's a difference between a service animal and a therapy animal. And I think a lot of people just saying, well, my therapy animal is my service animal. Correct. I'm not. It's Correct. just, it keeps me company. Yeah. Is not the same as I need him to nudge me when he right. senses well, that I'm low on. I mean, the, the challenge is is when you have recognizable uh, disabilities such as blind or mm -hmm. deaf or mm -hmm. even epilepsy. I mean, people with epilepsy have no problem saying, "I'm epileptic. I need this dog," or "I'm diabetic," and mm -hmm. they are they keep me on task. Yeah. But a lot of times, um, people with other uh, not quite so recognizable disabilities um, that you know the whole emotional support animal industry which I'm not opposed to at all I think that's pretty phenomenal but they don't serve the same purpose as a service animal that animal is is an extension of their ability to live mm -hmm. and be able to you know do the tasks they need to do when they need to do them so um, but through research and whatnot, I mean, the task can be something as simple as nudging. So mm -hmm. that that's, I mean, yeah, we, but no, we're not allowed to ask yeah. for any verification that they are a legitimate service dog, that they've been through the rigor mm -hmm. of training. Mm -hmm. um, we are allowed to inquire about, are they vaccinated and Good. can you provide proof? Yeah, thank God. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Is there a removal of a service animal? What's that? Oh. What is the removal of a service animal? If the animal is okay. out of control, okay. yeah, because say the, that most service animals are going to prove pretty quickly whether or not they're a service animal. Yeah, if they're disruptive in class, if they bark a lot, yeah. if they bark at all, actually, um, um, if they become a distraction in the hallways where everyone's petting and the handler doesn't control that, then that's cause for removal from school grounds. Or the dog is looking for it. I mean, yeah, if they're truly say, not, like, if they're truly not trained, that the, the a that, dog or that you know, part generally their dogs actual service animals mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. pretty quickly yeah because I could bring my dog in but three seconds in he'd be in someone's lap <laughs> well yeah I think yes. I figured it out so I think 2585 is the one we did last year yes and it the dog stuff I think does line up with what we have in today's policy okay so it's just the four vaccines for the dog it looks like we included lepto, which is not core, but common okay. to vaccinate for, and that's the one that can be transmitted to people. So I think that that's why we left it in there. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And then there wasn't cats in this one, obviously, because it was therapy dogs. Right, so right. that's new in here, and I think okay. that needs some tweaking. So this one, where's the... That's the so when, oh, when we're referring to therapy animals, or it's just animals in general, are we talking specifically dogs? This says a therapy dog. I think the okay. therapy one was specific to therapy the dogs. The therapy dog was specific to therapy dogs and what so, it was for, for training therapy dogs. Right. So if someone comes and says, this is my therapy durable, how do we handle that? Well, that's not allowed. A true okay. service animal? Okay, well, I know, I know, I know. I'm just saying that there are a lot of people in well, the general public who No, I know, but say, do you know, I mean... Service animals can be one of two animals, and that's it. Okay, that's. I think. Yeah. That needs to be. Is that defined in here? As in the, the service ser animal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. It says I hadn't a seen service it. Service animal is defined to mean any dog that has been individually trained to work. Okay. The okay. What's the other animal that's allowed? Miniature dogs. horse. Miniature horse. Stop it. Stop it. Serious. <laughs> yeah. So we're waiting, waiting for that one. Right right my leg. <laughs> <laughs> they're, like, they're like the size of a dog, though. They're like, yeah, oh, they're adorable. Okay, yeah. It says, note that other species of animals, whether wild or domestic, trained or untrained, are not service animals for the purpose of the regulatory definition. Miniature horses, <laughs> although not included in the definition of service animals, are protected under ADA. Yes, I'm doing it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to have. I'm gonna have something. <laughs> <laughs> My husband can't stop me. He there can't you go. There you can't go. I have it. <laughs> I don't know about that. But <laughs> who's that one? <laughs> My kids just watched a movie 
understand that about like the girl that like started this whole thing. I think she was blind or something, and she got okay. this miniature horse. And okay. Was, was, like, really cute. Cute. I don't wear my glasses. I can't see. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I'm just gonna get a horse. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Seems uh, like the much easier solution. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah. It's just there in case your cat does have an idea and bites and then you're in trouble. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if it, the way I look at it too is if a student, first grader, brings in their pet cat for show and tell, and the cat freaks yeah. out because they're in a strange environment and jumps down and runs, and some other child tries yeah. to grab it and gets scratched by right. it and then develops, you know, either an infection, cat scratch fever, I don't know. <laughs> but um, that's trying to prevent that from occurring, this policy. I Just to also throw worst case scenarios out, like there were times at the vet clinic where like a pet with an unknown vaccine history, no history of vac rabies vaccination, would bite a person, either another client there or a staff member, and then like all hell breaks loose if that happens basically because like then the vets have to report it to the state and then the pet has to be quarantined and the person who got bit has to go get checked out and then there's talk about mm -hmm. are we doing rabies, you know, protection mm -hmm. injections. It's like nine shots for the first Yeah, day, so right? it's, it's yeah. a very big deal yeah. if a non-rabies vaccinated pet did bite someone. Mm -hmm. So that might be part of the concern. And rabies is like the big obvious one and it's in everyone's mind, but they don't necessarily think about contracting some of those things from animals. Right. Worms or lepto. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the statement, um, all animals are required to have an annual well check examination from a licensed veterinarian. Documentation of the examination and certification of a healthy animal is required. And submitted to the school principal. Is that where we were sending all the other documentation before? It was all having to go required. in their file. You might want to think about the word certification just because that makes you think that it requires a health certificate, which is expensive and like that's what would be used like if you were flying okay. with your pet. Right. Um, well, I'm just thinking, I mean, there should be, I mean, okay, what do we want to call it? Uh, I don't know. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, like if it were me as a vet, like I, I would write a letter typically just saying like, I examined Fluffy and here's his, you know, vaccine history, and he appeared to be healthy at the time of the visit, something like that, mm -hmm. which I think for our purposes would be sufficient. I don't think we'd have to require a health certificate. Okay, so documentation of an examination and verification of a healthy animal status shall be presented to the building principal? Yeah, something like that. Is that does that sound... A current, a current healthy status? Um, do we need... Does that... Okay. Go ahead. My licensed veterinarian documentation of examination and verification of healthy animal status, is that still implied under the previous sentence that that healthy animal status is coming from the veterinarian? Like, I, I would assume that, but verification of healthy animal status, I'm like, yeah, the cat, that's healthy. Yeah. You know? Signed, Lacey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Not wanting to documentation of the examination and verification of a healthy animal status from the veterinarian shall be um, presented to the or provided, I guess, to the building principal. Yeah. And then, and then just any additional um, recommendations for um, treatment not outlined below or at, like. How, how we want to word that, just like any, if the, any veterinarian recommended treatments not outlined below will also have to be fulfilled. Or, you know, like if, if the vet says that, you know, this dog should be dewormed every three months instead or whatever, like that, that has to be fulfilled. You have to follow it, yeah. anything in addition to these requirements that the vet thinks are necessary based on the, the animal that you have. Or do you think that would be covered if, because if the pet required other things, I'm just thinking if I were the vet, if the pet required other things, I probably wouldn't 
give them a document that said he was healthy if they hadn't done those other things. But like, so, but I'm just thinking if you're saying as the vet, okay, mm -hmm. I come in in August, school starts in September, and you say, you know, this animal's healthy, but you really should be deworming every six months, what's, what in our language is saying that you actually have to follow through on that to maintain that animal in your classroom? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Like, because if we're just saying that you just have to have that certificate of wellness, then six months later your dog's got worms because you didn't follow through. Right. So yeah. how do we, how do we word that of like, you also have to fulfill whatever maintenance? Yeah, you could just say back on that upper, if you scroll up, Michelle, you could say, um, Documentation do not meet Um All animals required to have animal check exam for licensed veterinarian. Oh, yeah, how do you stick that in there? In the event the licensed veterinarian. Do we? We'll oh, help them out up here. Hold on. In the event. The veterinarian recommends any additional treatments not outlined below. Those must be fulfilled as recommended in order for the animal to be allowed in the school or whatever. Any additional care not outlined below in number two. I wonder about the word recommends because, um, I mean, like you're saying, that could be a range. Someone might recommend things that are like ridiculous. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Versus, you know, that could get a little ridiculous. Depending on which yeah, that's too. true. Like the five hundred dollar pre tooth cleaning yeah. screening. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or like yeah. sedated tooth yeah. cleaning. Yeah, like that's not going to impact the right. safety of kids. Yeah, right. To me, yeah. some some of it we're gonna have to go on trust that people yeah. are right. You know, if they're taking the animal in, that seems reasonable. Mm -hmm. But we won't. We, how would we know if they followed up on the? Like if they're supposed to get the dewormer every six months, we wouldn't know that. Yeah. Come on, you're right. But does that cover our rear ends as a district if we're saying like? We required they had to do it, and then if, if they don't, then that then I don't know. Yeah, maybe it is just like tricky. required follow up care will be uh, expected followed up on you know, by the owner. I don't know. By the owner. Yeah, safety kit, so it's not just any kind of. What was that? <laughs> 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 huh? Did you put blue in your hair? Blue? Yeah. No, it's my old lady coming out. Oh, okay. Uh, well, it looks pretty. <laughs> yeah, We're no. just trying to figure out like how we, how we have language that requires them to maintain anything that would impact the the health risks to mm. students or staff in the school, but not saying like you have to do every recommended yeah. procedure the vets Maybe you know like talking about. Required follow up care will be performed by the owner. Or maybe that's the language we want in there, just anything, any any recommendations that would impact, that would student, impact, student in, health. impact the yes. health risk to Students. to the school environment must be in you know, anything that's in addition to gosh, that like, that's so hard to think of. <laughs> How you don't like have to end up listing a, a whole textbook. Mm -hmm. Well there's always those what yes. ifs. Mm -hmm. So that's why you're yeah. like, okay, yeah. what if this? Yeah. What if that? Any recommendations? I want to um, know how we're going to mitigate all the allergies. What we're going to do for staff and kids. I mean, some kids have allergies so bad that, like, EpiPens are required. Yeah. Well, know? and that's, you know, within all the parents have to be notified. So and then, that. you know, staff, yeah. and staff we knows. We did kind of, kind kind of, of thing. cover yeah. our bases on that one. Mm -hmm. Um, when we were talking about it last week, <laughs> <It's not touching laughs> yeah, there's got to be a lot of like signed uh, yeah, yeah. permission slips and stuff. Yeah, or I mean, like, what are we going to do with kids that, I mean, more than signed permission slips, they're not going to be able to be in the building. My daughter was one of those Couldn't kids. be in the building at all. Yeah, no. Then I think it's yeah. still that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That and I, no yeah. 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 I think the staff is definitely on that anyway. It's like, no. 
yeah. it's bad enough. You know, the kids are the kids are coming with yeah. dander on their clothing and whatnot, but you can't control that. But right, yeah, we, we know, did we know about this that student that has the you know severe first, allergy. But, yeah, just not coming into school. No, you're totally fine. We safeguard them very closely. <laughs> so what were you saying? Because I was I was on on a okay on a in the event uh, mode, but then one of you said something about any recommendations, and and I got distracted. No, you're fine. Any, uh, uh, um, recommendations made for the care of the animals. I think we had something about it, if it would affect the health of the students. That affect, yeah. it affect the health of, of students and staff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Tooth cleaning isn't kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like we don't care that it's got a torn Need to be maintained just, you know? yeah. on a regular yeah. basis or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, any recommendations <laughs> for care that would impact, would impact the health the welfare of the yeah. students. Or the staff. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Learning environment, staff, students, people. Just basically. Mm -hmm. for the, any recommendations for care that impacts the learning environment and or health of staff and students? Staff and students must be maintained by the owner. By the by the owner. By yeah. the animals owner. Okay. Or must be followed. Must, must be yeah. Maintained. Yeah. Must be must be followed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Re recommendations followed rather than yeah. must be followed. <coughs>
So they show that. Yeah. They usually have lesions on their skin, so you would see it yeah. on the physical exam, and then the vet would say, we need to test this, and they'd find the ringworm. And oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. And so okay. then it would have to be treated before the vet would say, yes, this can go around kids. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then I have one other question. Sorry, I know I wasn't no, here last week. Good. So my other concern with this is muzzles on both cats and dogs. Um, and the reason I say that is because cats with the bacteria in their mouth cause a cellulitis, which can cause a child to have to have their hand amputated because it's usually a child's hand that gets bit. Um, it's very dangerous. They carry that bacteria in their mouth to break down the meat they eat. Um, so therefore, it breaks down human fleshes easily. Um, and then dogs, obviously, because even if the dog is a well-behaved dog, mm -hmm. little kids startle animals all the time. Right. So this section is health and vaccination requirements, okay. we, which is towards the back. So if you want to peruse, because um, this is basically for uh, animals in the classroom and for those that want to bring their animal in for like show and tell. Mm -hmm. Um, so, it may be under visiting animals at school, which is on one, two, three, four, um, we may want to put a caveat in there. It's page four. Of it, the same. Of the same document. 2580. Yeah. Okay. With the lovely page number. Yeah. Bottom of <laughs> Okay, all right, sorry to interrupt. No, 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 you're good. Okay, so ferrets require a health certificate from a licensed veterinarian showing proof of current vaccination against rabies. The district may also request proof of a negative fecal exam or successful treatment of intestinal parasite within the last six months. And how do you pronounce that word? Citizen? Citizen? Birds? Ferrets, parakeets, budgies, and cockatiels. Health certificate from a licensed veterinarian to improve treatment or negative test result for. Um, okay. All right. So. Psittacosis? Where is it? Psittacosis? Yeah. Psittacosis. Psittacosis. It's got the P. Gotta say, call out the P. <laughs> the superintendent shall take, shall make the final decision as to whether or not any animal may be present upon school property. So every other time it's saying that it's put on the principal to decide that. So when does it come to the superintendent? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Also, so these are the only requirements for these animals. So I can bring in my chickens with no issues. I think that falls under that an annual exam that we added on number one. For all animals. For all animals. And then this just outlines specific. Well, are they domesticated chickens? Oh yeah, they're in the backyard. <laughs> they let me pick them up. Yep. Are the chicks? Mm -hmm. That's true, because we do. Uh, the rabbits? There are chicks. Yeah. 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 Uh, 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 would that be something that if I mean, we just had birds, just bringing in an animal. if we There's just had no birds instead of citizen birds, I mean, any birds would need an exam of that would be similar or not. Uh, yeah. Let me look at this as because <clears throat> I think you know that there are certain avian um, things that we don't want. Yeah, I mean, but and I, might, so to bring that up, I was thinking that as well. Or so a lizard. Like, well, or a, yeah. Anything but a dog, cat, or I have a rabbit. Can I think about it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there definitely would be animals that wouldn't be specifically covered with specific requirements. It seems like the red part that we wrote in would cover that, like if they had to get an exam by the vet and the vet said your bird needs X, Y, Z before animals. I would sign off for him to be around kids. Right. Okay. Yeah, because like one says all animals are yeah. required, okay. um, which. I totally get what you're saying. Um, I mean, again, yeah, like, no one's bringing an animal at this point. I mean, if this is all the girl roll you have to go through, I don't see this being a real issue. Uh, so, is it, yeah. 
So that so the red so the, the right first right. paragraph covers everything but what's specifically listed in two. No, it covers everything, but then specifically two cats, dogs, ferrets. Those are those are yes. obvious known ones that. Right. Whereas the others would be. Right. Not as. Okay. It would cover the chickens and the bunnies and all of that. However, what I um, I don't think it's too prohibitive. Most people with animals would have, I mean, annual exam or um, I have some people that go way overboard with their animals. They're like little humans. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's still feasible. Okay. So Most all of it is just typical examination stuff they look for anyways. Um, the language of number two needs to be worked a little. Okay. Um, it, it doesn't say it clearly. Um, okay. If we said that the, the following animals prior to coming into the building, because that was left out the coming into a building, um, must have current health records and proof of current vaccinations. I would start with the following animals rather than prior to, but that's, that's yeah, my, the following animals. The following animals, comma, prior to coming into the building, must have current health records and proof of current vaccinations. If as we required. Need this part. What's that? I just wonder if we even need anything from two down. Does like two so? A, B, C, or D. Because it's so specific to those four types of animals, but we've covered that they will have a well check and that the you know, whatever safety things will be followed up on by the owner. I just I it feels like we're getting in the weeds too much with specifically going into the details with those four types. The only thing those that are, I, go ahead. I was, those are the four most, most common yeah. and ones that have very specific vaccinations that we want to make sure they have. That are highly transmitted. transmitted. That could be transmitted, which yeah. like you were saying, there might be another, well, you know, maybe not that one mm -hmm. um, thing. Yeah. I've had a few vets in my family and like, because rabies is not super prevalent here, like one of them would have said like you don't really need to give your cat a rabies vaccine and so if they weren't rec recommending a rabies vaccine because mm -hmm. it's not super common or whatever yeah then that might put us in a pickle of the district mm -hmm. that that one that said you know on their on their annual exam yeah. that they weren't recommending i just rabies. wonder if we could say like including vaccinations for just you know like any mm -hmm. harmful whatever mm -hmm. so then it's just covered in I don't know. It's weird to me to do it for these four. To specify I had animals. all kinds of creatures come in when I taught first grade. So they they wouldn't necessarily fall fallen under this. Dogs, I mean, obviously they have puppies and stuff like that, but. I, I think it's kind of weird. Well, I just think there's a lot more variety in pet, I think, nowadays than there used to be as well. Major yeah. horses. <laughs> not a pet. Yeah. As long as it's your service animal, it's not a pet. It's not my pet. It's my pet. <laughs> <There's laughs> <the little. laughs> yeah. yeah. This is my this service is equine. Yeah. Just for today, which happens to be show and tell. Quinky <laughs> <laughs> dink. Um, Michelle, on the cats one, I think we need to clean it up a little bit. Okay. How's this? So if we change the second sentence to say the following animals have additional requirements that must be met prior to being allowed on school grounds, what we're talking about is the specificity of the right. vaccinations. <laughs> so, I mean, I think that we should reword these so that, you know, for the cats, we're looking for this, for the dogs, we're looking for that. Mm -hmm. Now the ferret is just rabies, apparently, and then the bird is just, you know, one bird thingy. Yeah. So I don't think we should take them out, but I do think we should make them specific to the few thingies. Yeah, I, I would use specific instead of ad additional. Okay. In that. Have specific requirements that must be. Okay. 
But they are yeah, additional, because then we'll have to restate state yeah. one down below if we don't say additional, won't we? Okay. Because bottom line is all animals have to have the well check exam. But we don't want to deviate from that. We're letting them know, in addition to that well check exam, they also need to have this. Um, okay. And this, Michelle, last week I think you, you mentioned, just to clarify, mm -hmm. this this list came from our legal something? That no, this, this came from Idaho School Board Association, because we've never okay. had this policy. Before, okay, okay. Which but a this bunch of the lawyers school board wrote association. It. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. That we used to be a part of affiliate. So we're we're just going through and kind of editing what the school board association recommends our policy would be. Correct. Okay. And it's supposed to be governed for the health of our district. I mean, it's you know if every parent in the whole district was like, we don't care. Right. All animals are allowed. Well, then we could write a policy that says right. all animals are allowed. You know, just we're flying by the seat of our pants. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the purpose of sending it out to the parents right. because sometimes we can't get a pulse on what people really want until they actually are like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, we'll send this out after we kind of get down to, through all of it. And if it comes back where parents are like, oh, please no, well then we're gonna rework it. Mm -hmm. So that's how the whole process is designed to work. Um, but yeah, they, they go off of the, the Idaho statute laws, rules, whatever. Um, this doesn't have, well, they, 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 what they try to. Yeah. Yeah, try to. This one is just focusing on 336001, which is parental rights. I mean, bottom line, it says in here at the very beginning, if you're gonna bring a, an animal into the classroom, you have to send out a consent form. That's all, mm -hmm. you know? But now we're, we're going deeper saying we also have to meet all of these other requirements for animals. And, and I think it's a really difficult situation to be in where it's right. like, I mean, I think all of us at this table are like, yeah, fine, I'm bring bringing the chickens, you know? Right. But then, then are the taxpayers going to be gravely disappointed if a kid does acquire an infection from that and we have a lawsuit against right. the district. So I think it, it's, a, it's, a it's tough it, it position is always, to be in. Right, yeah. always. Always. Yes. But, I mean, I don't want to prohibit the little chicks coming in, you right. know, watching right. the eggs Absolutely. hatch or you know, animal dissection. I mean, I, yeah. I just think that there's value in that within the learning environment. So mm -hmm. how do you balance it? Yeah. So on that note, to her point too, if, if she, a child wanted to bring in chicks, mm -hmm. would they have to get the chicks examined before they could come in? Do we want to write an exception in where like a principal could say, I make an exception for the chicks to come in? Can you speak to what the risk would be in that? Are, are there certain, are there certain risks, like even just having the eggs um, in the classroom and watching them hatch or baby chicks up until X age, is, is there a certain, Risk other than you know obviously like salmonella and just right. your, your typical right. like if but is there any risk that that your hand washing which we already covered right. right is there any risk that wouldn't be covered by your basic hygiene procedures I mean, not with chicks I don't think okay I don't like I'm trying to think about other animals that might be get exemptions but see if they're coming in from the egg status then mm -hmm. they're fully protected and then they pop out so if you're talking about someone that's hatched them on their farm at home, bringing them in, I mean, I, I don't want to see the difference, but others might, so yeah. I don't know. I mean, to me, they're little chicks and they're your little do, chicks. do your hygiene <laughs> procedures also cover whatever, like, you know, let's say it's, I mean, two eagle chicks, would that, I mean, like, sure. like oh, so, up in, like, if somebody wanted to bring in two eagle chi chicks, is there anything that would be, like, airborne or whatever, you know, because we talked about, like, hand washing and, and your hygiene procedures to cover anything. Yeah. Know. I mean, not really. I mean, that's why there are yeah. the zoos where you just you go to right. everything and then you just wash your hands. And, yeah. So so maybe there could be something that would uh, allow for exemptions. Um, like something eight weeks and younger. Six weeks and younger. And maybe, Try I mean, because that like would a be a really common stage, thing here you know? to just be baby right. chicks. Uh, um, is there anything else that we can think of that would be like your common like? I mean, we've had people bring in 
ghosts. Baby ghosts. Baby ghosts. We maybe we'll bring a baby yeah. bunny. I mean, I would say maybe we could do some sort of farm, yard farm animal extension yeah. type thing. That's a good idea. I mean, what do you guys think about that? Because no one's going to take their goat to that. I mean, I guess they do have goat. Mm-hmm. I know they have goat pets because my phone number is one number off from the emergency. <laughs> 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 and I've gotten lots of, yes, her number is 946, mine is 964. It's the same, everything. I get, oh, no. my pig's in labor. I'm like, I can't help you. <laughs> I know they have goat pets. Love up. Most people <laughs> own a farm are not, yeah. they're handling it themselves, they're vaccinating themselves, they're warming yeah. themselves. So I don't know, maybe uh-huh. some sort of farm. Farm animal exemption. Exemption could go in there because. With and them. Idaho does have a right to farm law that we could piggyback on. There you yeah. Go. Could yeah. we get, a, like is there like a, a list of, of typical farm animals that we could include and these would be part of the exemption that. Your emu is not coming in. That, <laughs> an emu farm. that would, that any transmissible disease they have would be covered by the hand washing hygiene procedures that we already outlined. Because if it's something that can be washed off your hands, like, so so what kind of animals could we include? It? Um, farm animals mm-hmm. under the age of X age. Mm-hmm. A year. And then just be specific about which ones we're allowing in that exemption that, so that we can kind of have a handle on which animals don't pose right. a great, great risk. So the trouble just would be, and I, for the record, I'm for the farm animal exemption, <laughs> but the trouble with listing some out would be if they're a mammal, they could technically get right. rabies, right? Mm-hmm. And they're probably not vaccinated for rabies. Mm-hmm. I think the risk is super low. I don't personally see a reason to not have a farm animal exemption. Um, are the parents signing off on this? And no matter what, anyway. Mm-hmm. So that well, I think that would uh, no, that that not if it's a show and tell thing. It's only if the animals in the classroom. Okay. Well, maybe so. what's our farm animals exemption that we could include? Parent, yeah. With parent permission, this exemption for parents opt in to have their kids. Okay. I don't know. That's a good go. idea. Mm-hmm. We should do that anyway, just to, just mm-hmm. for liability issues. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like. They're coming so, in. Yeah. I mean, there's always a risk of being pecked, bitten, kicked. Always, right. I mean, you know. a baby goat could headbutt somebody. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so all of this is just to, to have it in the classroom, housed in the classroom? It's not just for visiting animals? I thought no, it, it is. Both. It's, it's for both. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. So I think the farm So I think definitely would be the, the baby chicks, I, I, I think that would be a something that is common and valuable in our classroom. Mm-hmm. Baby ticks, and then, oh, I don't know. Rabbits, we had goats, we had, yeah. But here's the thing too, most people that bring in their baby stuff also understand the value of whatever it is that they own. Right. They're not just handing it off to a bunch of kindergartners right. to right. say, have at it. Right. Right. They're, I mean, they don't want to harm their valuable farm animal as well. Right. No squishing the baby chicks. Yeah, they're not gonna just. Oh, like me, funny. <laughs> I'm never going to go over that. <laughs> I don't know. child. I can't remember where it all was hugging a bunny when it was four and killed the bunny by squeezing it to our elbow. <laughs> Some a bunch of stuff. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, but that's a tragedy. That's <laughs> one to it is. <laughs> when we've had chips be brought in, the first ten minutes are how to safely handle a chip. It's not right. just like... Right. Go grab one. Right. Here they are. Have at it. You know, it's like you you got to hold them or they will scratch you. They might peck you, but they're, and you know, another kid might bite another kid. I don't know. We can't protect everybody. Right? Poop in your hand. You can't go. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> and the kids that they knew were kind of at a risk, they wouldn't pull with a buddy then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how am I wording this? <laughs> <laughs> That's as far as we got. Just <laughs> <laughs> old McDonald owns it. It's yeah. okay. Like, with uh, the parents sure that approval or like the approval they, um, from parents. See. Yeah. Yeah. With parent well, approval, okay. the principal can a can approve typical, an exemption. Or I feel like typical barnyard animals. I mean, or it would be you know. Yeah. I know they have ostrich farms. You're probably not going to bring them. Yeah. Like so, with parent approval, the principal. Yeah, the can authorize an exemption mm-hmm. to the previous requirements. An exemption? Oh, come on. Or, what did you say? You and said, no. Um, we authorize an, ex- an exemption. exemption. Did I get a baby horse? 
You did, we <laughs> typical, typical, farm typical farm animal. Yeah, typical. Typical, typical farm animal. Young farm animal. Yeah, under and a certain age. Yeah, under. I don't know where that might put. I, would I think put you said eight weeks. Did you say what? Oh, there was just kind yeah. of eight, eight, I just eight, thought that was a, a good meaning. I'm trying to think. Mm -hmm. I mean, no one wants to bring in their full head, or their you know, full grown goat, or full grown chicken. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to goat. think of, you know, like the age between the weaning and when they're really yeah. could be susceptible. I mean, other than certain flus and stuff, which is passed by sneezing or whatever. Uh, <coughs> but I think that's a pretty good safe. Twelve weeks and younger, three, four, two, three months old. You know. Yeah. I vote twelve weeks personally. Yeah, I think it. I think that would be good. Twelve We're weeks. Still, I think still a little bit. Twelve weeks. Twelve weeks. Yeah. No, we're here about three months. Because I mean, they're just as susceptible, right? Like they're not going to want to bring their farm animal to catch stuff from the people either. Right. You know. So with proper that's right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. With proper notice to parents and parent approval provided, the building principal <coughs> may authorize typical farm animals under twelve weeks to be brought onto school grounds as a visiting animal without adherence to the health and vaccination requirements. I would say twelve oh, weeks oh. old. But okay. Yeah. Do you want? Do you need to say health and vaccination requirements above, listed above, or for or other animals, or without proper notice to to or without with proper notice to parents <laughs> and parent approval provided, the building principal may parent approval should say. Um, And maybe a reference number. Um, reference. Actually, what we said here, and in other areas, you you would require to be written parental approval. Well, so is that um, that's what she used proper instead. Just appearance and um, oh, yeah. there we go. Well, I'm trying to be consistent because <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm like we talked about that earlier over here. Mm -hmm. um, so they need to put prior to exposing any student to a live animal in the classroom. The teacher shall provide written notification to all parents, guardians, and or legal custodians. So, to parents. Hmm. So, with written notice to, to parents, guardians, and or legal custodians, and the completion of Form 2580F, <coughs> the building principal may authorize typical farm animals under 12 weeks old to be brought onto school grounds as a visiting animal without adherence to the health and vaccination requirements listed above. Okay, put a comma after old. <coughs> okay.
So, Ronnie, you have a question, sorry. No, go ahead. Just, just to be devil's advocate on that. So, if we're using the language typical farm animals, right? if somebody had um, feral barn cats that had kittens, would our intention be to allow those? Well, to me, a feral cat is not a farm animal. Uh, but yeah. if it was, I mean, barn cats around here, you yeah, say it's a barn cat. Like, it, you can't milk it. It doesn't it provide a service. service. Or, or I mean, serve it for I'm just wondering the language when we're talking well, about. They're a present on milk. a farm, but they're not a farm <laughs> but animal. Oh, but could milk it. This <laughs> kitten's <laughs> 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 But I don't know that I would try. <laughs> well, no, but you're not going <laughs> to. But no, to me, a feral I mean, I think the principal would look at that and say, yeah. Oh, uh, no. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this falls into the cat. Yeah, I'm fair. Right. Not cat. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. That was just my only question, just the language of farm animals. If we were going to have somebody just be like, oh, I mean, we'll just yeah, have somebody yeah. out there. So yeah. I just wanted to make sure. But I didn't know that, that falls under a cat. Okay, that's wrong. Yeah. Okay. Do we need so to have a, a list of be. definitions, farm animal means? <laughs> well, a cat could be in a house, a cat could be in an apartment, a cat could be. I have to have a goat in the apartment. Well, you, you could. Uh, you want your mini horse. I do want my mini horse, but I don't want it. Okay. <laughs> and it's a service animal. But no, it's it's a fair question. I mean, yeah. traditional yeah. farm animals to me is, you know, goat, sheep, llama, okay. cow, well, maybe you say horse, large um, farm animal. Fisher Price. Pig. Yeah. Is it in the Fisher Price farm? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> program, there may be instances in which an animal is brought into the school setting prior to any such animal coming into the setting. Free approval must be obtained from the building principal no less than five school days prior to the scheduled meeting. <coughs> Your written request must be submitted to the building principal, which includes the following. Yeah. The animal. Animals owner agrees to hold the district to employees and agents homeless for any injury to the animal. Um, I don't know if I can out. Whatever. Oh, and there is a prohibited animal section. I don't know if agents cover students, but I don't know if students in there. <laughs> okay, so do you feel that we need to list that animals need to be? Well, I guess it's up to them. I guess that's up to them. I mean, I don't want them to seem too restrictive, but I'm just yeah. saying it. Okay. I think that you put things in there that would protect us in a reasonable situation. Correct. I think a muzzle to me would feel that the animal is dangerous. Yeah. yeah. Or that a, a non-dangerous animal would then react poorly. Right. I've never had a muzzle on. He's never bit anybody. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I put a muzzle on him. Yeah. There's like he's gonna get squirrely. He's gonna get squirrely. He's never yeah. had it before. Okay. All right. So are we good with this? Just the one, the part with the superintendent. How did you reword that? I don't know what I did. Okay. Because I just um, yeah. Yeah, all of a no, sudden the superintendent no. thrown in there, and I just was wondering when, when that would. I think they just mean that if there is something going on where the building principal has said no, like this animal doesn't. Yeah. Safe to us and the they take week, it to the, the superintendent. superintendent. Ultimately, makes the decision. Okay, that's Maybe just like changing the wording to mm -hmm. say like the ultimate decision. Mm -hmm. but, I don't know, but the superintendent may override any any decision, like yeah. because the if you say like, the only level decision. Yeah. 
Because if it says like the superintendent shall make the final determination, it makes it sound like you're waiting on you're waiting on the superintendent. Right. Yeah. But just the so, superintendent may override any any decision whether or not any animal may be present on school property or whatever. Oh, or if actually yeah, that language. Or if a yeah. parent is saying, "Well, wait a minute, yeah, you're allowing can, such and such animal. I don't want that to happen. I don't think it should be, even be in the building." That language, actually, the may be present upon school property is going to open a whole different can of worms because of the people that take their dogs after school hours and and whatnot on the property. So that might have to be like it's maybe present upon school property during school. during school hours. Okay. Because if we leave it like that, then we've, then we've got a whole other issue of how we keep animals off school property outside of school hours. Lock the gates and they have to climb the six foot fences. Although I think some of them sometimes they do that. Agility. Come back over if you take care of things. Mm-hmm. Or I could say the superintendent may make the final May make the Maybe final fixes um, Superintendent. Mm-hmm. In the event of a disagreement. Well, and that's where I was thinking on how to word this because mm-hmm. if there is a conflict between I want the dog to go and I don't want the dog to go, well, the superintendent's going to rule on that and mm-hmm. make yeah. that decision. Yeah. Like In the event so, of a, uh, yeah, I, I do like the ultimate. Um, how about has the final authority? That way, that way it doesn't sound like you're waiting on the superintendent to approve or disapprove every form that comes through, but has the final authority to determine. Yeah. But ultimately, the reason the superintendent would step in is there's some sort of conflict or disagreement about whether or not the animal should or shouldn't be. You just be. say that during the event of conflict or, do, or disagreement. The superintendent has a final determination between the animal owner and the principal. Well, between mm-hmm. anybody, any conflict. Yeah, that's a good thing. Of a conflict or disagreement. Or a Say has the, I would say will make. I would say will make rather than has the. Will make rather than shall make or shall make. And the other thing is, is um, it's not only during school hours, but any school function. So even if it's, um, oh yeah, you know what I'm saying. Any time well, like the reptile guy came after school. Yeah, you know, it came in the evening. Um, kind of thing. So how would you say that? School property for any school function. Change the cat part a little bit. Just we need to delete the how far. Well, we just need to clean it up. Okay. Well, and also 
We list on cats, and dogs, and ferrets that they require a health certificate, but I don't think we mean that. Okay. So um, I think that we just need to say um, proof of current vaccination from a licensed veterinarian. It would just matter if like holes in it. I know ultimately like if it's a disagreement or saying that, but like all of this other stuff is on the book. Okay. So yeah. Um, and then it was just DLA and CYA, but then yeah. you've got yeah, you know. Um, and then we just need to all. delete <laughs> feline yeah. chlamydiosis. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that that's fine. A proof of transfer. Here's one policy, and we covered all three or four things in one animals at school. Um, for educational purposes, service animals, and presence of animals on school grounds, and they just say uh, that they're just subject to precautions specified in the administrative regulations related to the length of visit, number of animals, health and safety, sanitation, um, staff ensures the rules are followed, precautions are observed, um, that both the animal and the students are protected, uh, that the animal is a full responsibility of the owner, the district assumes no liability for the safety of these or any of the animals voluntarily brought to school. That's that one. And then there are service animals. There's a, two paragraphs. And then uh, presence of animals on school grounds just says other than for the purposes outlined in section one and two above, no animals including pets may be brought onto school grounds by any individual at any time whether the school is, regardless of whether school is currently in session. That was pretty simple. That is very simple. Does our admin handbook have that? I don't know. Handbook. Admin. <laughs> yes. But if you, you know, if you're not, doesn't seem to be specifying precautions or safety, so. It's right. Well, it's all in the handbook. Yeah. It keeps okay, so some, somewhere it's somewhere right, right. else. Right, that's what it somewhere says. Else. Okay. It says you have to follow all of these admin specified administrative regulations related to length of visit, number of animals, health, safety, and sanitation, and the insurance to protect both the student and the animals. No, there's nothing in, that in the handbook. Okay. Okay. Sorry, we get with. Um, going on to the form. Mm -hmm. Last okay. thing about the psittacosis, do yeah. you want to put a timeline on that for the proof of treatment or negative test results, or do we not care as long as at some point they test negative and they've lived in a cage for the last 10 years? We don't care. I don't know much about birds, so I don't know. Like, you know the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bird party. <laughs> like I said, I'm not a, a bird vet either. But they don't just get it out of thin air. I mean, they'd have to get infected with it from another animal or something. Is it a common is is it a common test? Like, if if that was part of their like annual exam, is it? Is it's it definitely like not like a, an annual exam kind of thing. Like, okay. I'm sure that the blood test is, you know. Oh, okay. They so it's a blood test. Blood test. I've had I've had, had it for. Yeah. 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 So they've had, had it for five <laughs> years. It was tested three years ago. It's never right. been around any other it's bird. Been at home. It's been in a cage its entire life. Yeah. So maybe um, we would be it wouldn't the, contract the key it. thing about never been around any of the birds, so they've brought in seven other birds in the last ten years. Maybe it's one of those like you know, where we kinda have to have a little faith. Like, yeah, okay, yeah, they yeah, tested yeah. it at some point, yeah. it's you know, we move on. I don't Is know. it airborne? Uh, because the, if it's not airborne then that's kind of covered under our hygiene procedures that sure. are kind of washing up. I think it's I think it's airborne. Yeah. Um, Hey Google, is psittacosis airborne? Well, it gave me airborne. <laughs> Let's see. Airborne infection. Being in the same room with poor ventilation as an infected bird can also cause your pet bird to contract the disease, so I would assume people yep. also. Mm -hmm. And it is something called out by the CDC because it infects birds and people. This is also a way for psittacosis to spread to humans caring for infected birds airborne. So yes. Yeah. Okay, so, um, let's see. Diagnosis and treatment. Huh, really? What does it say? Oh, yes, it's been detected by other methods, including metagenomic sequencing. So they test the spit, sperm, um, spit and, and sperm. the nasal uh, pharynx. Okay. <laughs> it's just like not a grunt today. <laughs> it's cultured. 
Oh, they do have a rapid test, rapid detection, but how long is the treatment? proof of treatment or negative test results for cetosis having been obtained while under the current owner? Under ship, maybe? Do we even need having been received? Can yeah, you just say? Well, under current ownership. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you're looking for like proof. Like, mm-hmm. The longer they're caged, the more mm-hmm. susceptible the current they are. Ownership, the longer they're caged? Mm-hmm. Okay. So proof of treatment or negative test result for cetosis with current ownership? Uh, during. During current ownership? Yep. in the 80s, 70% of them, um, they knew that they were uh, indicated exposure to caged birds, accounted for 70% of the cases. 43% of that being the largest group were owners of companion birds or bird fanciers and pet shops where employees accounted for the additional 10% because it's once again back to the cleanliness of the people. They right. because it's spread through feces and dust and dried feces. And okay, I have an idea. What if we say proof of treatment or negative test results for psittacosis during current ownership, comma, or as recommended by a veterinarian? There you go. Boom. Oh, good. I'm not going to the bathroom. 
for educational purposes. Cat, guinea pig, hamster, mouse, bird, dog, reptile, or <coughs> amphibian, <coughs> gerbil, ferret, rabbit, rat, other. Is that, oh, so no. is this for educational purposes? Is that barring, I mean, I don't think show and tell is really educational. That's right. I think, I think that, in my it's, mind, I feel like, like that could be lumped under it. I mean, okay. depending on how you lead that right. show and tell. Right, right, right. Yeah. No, I just want to make sure that it wasn't. I think that right. was, I think, did somebody bring that up next, last week? I, I feel like somebody, we, we, we talked about that, like, we could reasonably lump that under there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Noted. Um, um, oh, go ahead. I was just curious, since now we've listed out hamster, guinea pig, etc. Um, are there any... Sp- and she's gone. Are there some specific things that we need to watch for? Rats, the, the rodent and uh, group of animals. Is there a specific care other than they need to have that current dose? I don't know. Okay. I just know that within the policy we're saying we're still saying they must they have, have current have, current health. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but I am, I mean, the following animals are prohibited, doesn't line up with what we mm-hmm. well, stated. Right, so the, like number not. six, we would need to change, we change that wording of aggressive and un, or unpredictable. We should ch- make that language the same as it is earlier. Right, I think, um, didn't have non-human primates in there but earlier, do we need to... I think we should take that wording out. I think we're going to hear all about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
the wording of that. Who's who's bringing him? Okay, it's cool. Mm-hmm. Well, or just say primates, or just don't have that in there. I mm-hmm. don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's just it. It's okay. Well, huh? we don't have wild or exotic animals on the other list. Mm-hmm. So that needs Which to, to me, yeah. primates, like you know, non-human primates would fall into the exotic. And, and the right setting, maybe there is a. Well, do, do we need to put wild, uh, and maybe the inherently dangerous was where we really were thinking wild and exotic an- or exotic animals. Which, I don't know, some of those birds would be considered yeah, exotic. Yeah. Like, so I don't, I think that we covered a way mm-hmm. for that to safely happen within the policy. Taking out the this two and four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. So we're taking out wild animals. We're taking out non-human primates. That's silly. Um, <laughs> that too. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so the building principle or designees. Yeah, so I was wondering about the designee. It's the principal. Will ensure that the district's policies and procedures for the use of animals and educational programs are followed. Oh, that would be, um, I should say, and teacher. Will ensure that the, will ensure the, The district's policies and procedures for the use of the animals in education programs are followed. Um, I will I, also That part, we've not specified who I is anywhere. <laughs> Up at the above, it's the student and it's the grade or the teacher necessarily, but it's... Um, right. And if, if you're saying I, referring to the teacher... I don't know. I was should she, see what it should he, she sign that? So I will also supervise the entire student animal conduct. Oh, okay, so... This is the teacher will supervise the entire student animal contact session, how they clean and disinfect an area for showing the animals. Not allow food or drink in the animal shown the area, <coughs> and will appropriately dispose of animal waste. What did we say? Um, animal waste there was an animal. intentional component because mm-hmm. you were talking about like you know the little puppy feet on you were you know like right. We had, there was language about it being an intentional like. Yeah. 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 Well, I think it's more different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then that second line under no sort of circumstances are engages or handle animal waste, so if there's an accidental pooping mm-hmm. incident. Mm-hmm. Kids aren't cleaning it up. Mm-hmm. But they could keep but it like if it poops in their hand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what you're saying, yeah. Intentional. I mean, they're not allowed. Mm-hmm. They weren't going to allow it, but <coughs> animals are unpredictable. Poop happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that makes sense what you're saying. It's not saying that they will not under any circumstances, but that Touch. they aren't I mean, allowed. If they're handling an yeah, animal, that there's that possibility. Yeah, that makes sense. And we're not saying that they're not going to be allowed to handle the animal. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. I mean, with... So, are, is it going to be the teacher? Or, or are we going to keep that as I will also? 
Well, the building the principle will ensure the district policies and procedures for the use of animals in education are followed. The teacher, yes, the teacher. Will okay, that's. I think that would be better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm just trying to make sure that the language parallels what we changed in here. I don't remember. Because um, we talked about the area. Um, one inch of snow. What? On Sundays? Yeah. Don't speak it. Don't we were just talking <laughs> about this today. It's like, what? Don't tell me that. Ignore it. Yeah, exactly. Do a sunshine dance or something. touch or come into contact with yeah. it's, it's what they have to do before mm -hmm. the animal mm -hmm. enclosures are mm -hmm. okay. Just a mm -hmm. I don't see anything. Can you know there's some place you have to do that? This complaint will return this form to me by whatever date. I would s make it your child's mm -hmm. teacher for both there, for both the knees and the, that line and the next. That way it's Generic to every situation. screen bigger so if you just want the page oh, bigger okay right there it says 75 percent oh i see it got it okay thank you now is this the one for yeah. if an animal's gonna be housed in the classroom 
Well, what is this one that you're this going is, over? Or is this the current? Exposure? This is just for exposure to animals. So whether it's going to okay. be housed in the classroom or... So um, how is... So this one is... There's a second page. Right. Oh, okay, because I didn't see the second well, page. I was wondering okay. where that... Oh, I'm sorry. Guardian of the Census form, please certify the following. I have full authority to sign a consent to the permission form and release as agent of any and all other parents and other legal guardians. Michelle, can you yeah. just go up real quick? When we were talking about the, the checklist, I do or do not permit my student to be exposed. Yep. In the I do not permit my student um, to be exposed, it says when the animals are present, my student will be excused from class attendance without penalty and given an alternative class edu uh, educational activity. We talked about last week, we touched on just a little bit, like if this is, you know, halfway through the school year, you know, Johnny has a severe, you know, disease come about, mm -hmm. he's not going to be relocated to another classroom, the animal will right. not Johnny. Right. So is that, it, it, like, is that misrepresenting it, that, that the student will be excused from class in all circumstances? No, I thought there was a second, I guess there was a, we have a procedure. And would this go out if someone were to have a service animal in the classroom? Um, yeah, I think that its intention is any exposure mm -hmm. to any animal. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as the child being, I mean, obviously getting rid of the pet, I mean, that's sort of a... That's just the problem. If two people are allergic to it in each class, what happens? Yeah. Well, like she said, the pet goes away in the... But if it's a service no, animal... No, but if it's a service animal, animal oh, we oh, can't. Service animal, yeah. Well, if know. it's a service animal, then we have to accommodate the needs of both right. students. Yeah. Right. So, uh, however, if there is a significant allergy issue, I think it has to be a case by case. I don't think you write that in here. No, mm -hmm. because you're going to strain or hold it. But if there is a, if there is an allergy issue and we can't accommodate the needs of the student with the allergy, then I believe there has to be a different type of accommodation for the service animal person. In the sense, like if two people are in a classroom, then the student with the allergy then would need to go to the opposite side. Yeah, but that's side not our, that's no, not no, no, policy though. No, but I that's don't. an admin. Right. So, I mean, from a board, per, from a board perspective, Right, we wouldn't make that decision at no. all. No, well, and neither would the policy. That is an administrative thing. Correct, but we do need to rework our policy. But I think they're just asking because we have stuff going on, and so um, yeah. If what I know and what I've been told by legal counsel is that if if there are two, if, if you've got the service animal, and then that brings up other students with issues, um, we have to serve all of them. Yeah. So, but would this have to go out to that class? Because you would be a No, we cannot and let everyone know, know that there's a service animal in the So building. they would well, just no, show up one day and hope they don't go into animal like a shop? Yeah. Correct. That that does, that's that, the law. What? That's that the law. We're, we're not being specific we're to, as that. to, we're just saying there's going to be a dog in the classroom or whatever the service we we're not I mean, saying it's a service it animal yeah. there is going to be an animal in your child's classroom yeah this is an admin you, but the, uh, the difference is is the district is not using the animal in the educational environment mm -hmm. a person needs the animal to conduct life because they have a Right. No, I understand. Disability. But at the infringement of another person's life, that has a se severe reaction that to it. Like that, we get how the law is written. Wow. I feel like that like opens, opens us up finish. for all that kinds of things. Yeah. Law is not. Right. This is an admin discussion. Okay. That's like whoa. Yeah. Well, I was it's, thinking, like, Ramona said, her daughter was so allergic to cats. Well, right. my son was so allergic to dogs. Right. He showed up on the first day of school, and little Johnny in his class has a dog. As the parent of my kid, I'm going to be pissed. Nobody told me that. Right. Mm -hmm. I hear you. It happens. Absolutely. We hear it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
But, and actually, this has been something that's been in the background for like three years because we've had different things come up, but it has to be handled Hang on just at an admin. It does. Hang on. We are at 6.30, so we're going to oh. go ahead and stop recording. Oh.